Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today I'm bringing you a right for you, wrong for you review on Townsfolk Tussle, a Kickstarter game that I kind of went mad over about two years ago when we first covered it. Now, it arrived maybe around six months ago to critical acclaim and skyrocketing prices on eBay, and in 2023 should be coming back for an expansion and reprint. So don't rush out and get your hands on this game immediately. Instead, we're going to help you determine whether or not this is one that you want to start budgeting for as we move into the next season. Now, I've already put out a whole series of videos on it, multiple gameplay videos, and a video talking about how Townsfolk Tussle does certain things better than Kingdom Death Monster. We'll touch on those topics and talk about how they've extended into my current opinion of this game, and as the final part of the video confirms, will touchstone into the verdict, what my actual final thoughts are. By the way, if you're a consistent fan here at the Quackalope Show or you're brand new here, we are working to bring back the Right For You, Wrong For You series on a weekly basis every single Thursday. Wes Todd, our flamingo, has been hired to make sure our schedule stays consistent and precise, so hit that subscribe button. Let us know in the comment section down below what games you'd like to see reviewed, and with that being said, let's set up the format. So the format of our Right For You, Wrong For You series looks at seven categories that we examine when determining if a game is right for us or wrong for us. Those categories are an overview of the game, a general breakdown of the theme, a deep dive into the accessibility, how easy it is to get to the table, an analysis of the gameplay, what makes it unique, a discussion around the modes of play, a debate around innovation, whether it is or is not, and then finally, a wallet check, a price point check on the cost of the game. And we've added a final category for this series going forward, which is just our final verdict, our say, right? Sign at the end of it. So, what is Townsfolk Tussle? Townsfolk Tussle is a boss battling skirmish game. You're going to be running with various different like Betty Bop style characters and the style or the art style of things like Cuphead, which has brought back that old school hose arm type characters, and they've really brought it into like the modern era. You're going to be taking one of these characters and fighting for the preservation of Eureka Springs against a whole selection of bosses. Right now we have Pep and the Milk Frog set up, but you could fight against town ghosts and ghouls, the queen and king. You could fight against a lonely little tourist who wandered into Eureka Springs and the townsfolk just don't trust him. The flavor text here, the story here is remarkable, but we'll get to that in just a moment. The core mechanics of the game are going to be composed of four total ruffian fights, where you escalate in difficulty, and every time you've defeated one, you come back here to the town phase, you purchase from the peddler, adding gear, upgrading your weapons, and trying your best to uh, earn whatever victory points you can, because there is an overall winner to this game. While it is a cooperative experience, if you make it to the end of the campaign, or the end of the, the probably three to four hour long session, one person will be declared the new town sheriff, and ultimately, that's what you're searching for. That's what you're trying to accomplish. Now, the phases of the game are a town phase where you go through the process of reading an event, upgrading your character, spending the coins you've earned, and then setting up the next stage, which is going to be uh, summoning some of your challenges and then placing out and revealing what creature or what ruffian you're going to be fighting. After that, you'll set up the map, and it follows pretty classic boss battler systems. You have some general stats like health, movement, moxie, which is your energy, and accuracy. You'll use those with whatever combination of abilities or weapons that you have, because every character is asymmetric. You'll interact with whatever puzzle pieces or terrain type you have here on the map, and you'll defeat the ruffian in a variety of different ways. There's usually some degree of just punch them in the face, but there's also usually a mix of solve a puzzle, run to each corner, of the room or avoid certain combat attacks. You lose the game if everyone drops to zero health during one of the ruffian battles. They've taken over the town and Eureka Springs is lost forever. But as long as some of you remain and you're able to take down each ruffian, you'll escalate in difficulty till finally you flip to boss mode. 
Every single of the ruffians, every single one of the ruffians has their own version of a final fight. And these are where the game really starts to showcase the puzzle that it's presented. You've upgraded your characters, you've learned your skills, you've journeyed through this adventure, you have the type of fighter that you want to have, and then finally you face off against an extremely unique and extremely challenging boss battle. Overall, that's what Townsfolk Tussle is doing. Now, it is a longer game, three to four hours if you know it and you're running quickly through it and being efficient with things like your purchasing phase and your dice rolls. But I do have to say, it maybe should be more of a campaign game or it maybe should be more of a solo battler. That's probably one of the biggest cruxes we have here with Townsfolk Tussle is it just sometimes takes too long. Personally, for my game group, we actually just escalate through the first two fights. We don't even oftentimes engage with them. And we find ourselves at the third and the final fight after giving us some coins and drafting some of the upgraded gear that we would get naturally anyway. Doesn't mean it's not fun, but it does take quite a bit of time to actually get it down to the table and journey through it. And I know the designers are loosely aware of this. I think they are figuring out ways to iterate upon that, that function uh, or how accessible and how quick it is to play, but it acts like a campaign game without necessarily being a campaign game, right? You're not carrying story to story. Instead, you're facing off against four chapters, but it's all really meant to be done in one sitting. So if you're looking for an accessible and hose art style boss battler with lots of fun escalation, so many cool nerd culture references in the market and the gear that you're gonna be adding in, and a lot of unique mechanics when it comes to the actual fight while still being approachable and easy to play, this might be right for you. Being said, let's talk about one of the things that matters the most to me and one of the things that made me fall in love with Townsfolk Tussle from the beginning, which is the thematic overtures. The theme and the story and the writing here is so, so, so good. Every character is so full of life. Every bit of design, every little piece of flavor text, every item that you're able to get has just that extra touch, right? That extra bit of love and care. The way that you interact with the terrain pieces, the way that you read the big boss fights, and as you select your character and figure out who they are and how they work with this town, this really does feel like a old Disney animated show with a little bit of a darker undertone or a darker theme, right? Like this feels like you're playing in a cuphead style world, a dark, twisted visage of a kid's show that we might have enjoyed way back in the day. I absolutely adore the theme, and if you're a fan of things like Cuphead, if you're a fan of, of this style of art and this style of storytelling, you really will love this game. Like I've already established, you're fighting here in Eureka Springs where the sheriff has died and various different ruffians are coming in to take over the land and you are any one of the random just townsfolk that exists there with your own moral qualms, and you're trying to take down whoever it is you see as a threat and declare yourself the new town sheriff. It's zoomed in, it's microscopic, it's focused on this little community, and I could see so many IPs spinning off with the world that they've already established here. Genuinely, I could see a whole Cuphead style universe in a video game system that allowed you to play with these. I could absolutely see a novel series or a comic book series working in the art and the design. It's just done so well. So if the theme seems like something that you might be interested in, if you're intrigued and already attracted to it based off the art style and a little bit of the writing as it stands, just know this is 100% going to be a game for you. From there, let's talk about the accessibility. How easy is it to get to the table? How easy is it to play? And the time category will probably be my biggest criticism when it comes to this. I oftentimes don't feel like I have the time to sit down and truly play Townsfolk Tussle as it is meant to be played per the rules. We're talking three and a half, four hours of actual gameplay, so maybe a little bit longer when it comes to setup. That is a dedicated evening of game, and even longer than most of the games we typically sit down to play. When you get to that range, you're competing with things like Terraforming Mars or Blood Rage, and for a lot of my game group, that's a hard sell. You're also competing with larger campaign games, like I've already established Kingdom Death Monster, but also things like Oathsworn and ISS Vanguard that Instead of giving you one self-contained thing, you invest time in because you get to go on this narrative journey from stage to stage. As the game progresses, I honestly wouldn't be opposed to seeing Townsfolk Tussle turn into more of a campaign uh, and less of a singular boss battler. 
or arguably turn into more of a singular boss battler and less of a story arc or less of a town-based campaign. I'm not sure how they could do that. They'd probably have to remove some of the semi-cooperative elements of it, but those are also some of my least favorite elements. I like the boss battling. I like the cool gear. I like the weapons, but I don't always care about these secret objectives that I have. Yes, they do direct me to do crazy weird things that sometimes can be a laugh out loud fun, but I don't always have them that are available to accomplish. They're not always balanced. They're not always even. And so in our group, if you have one that is uncompletable, you flip it and draw another. Now, that's not how the rules say it should be played, but we try to at least draft and give everyone an option to compete for Sheriff and compete for the bonuses that you rip off the creatures at the end of the actual showdown. So, when it comes to accessibility, it takes quite a bit to set up. How is the actual gameplay, though? How is the process of learning and teaching? And here, it's actually pretty simple. If you know anything about boss battlers, if you're used to running stat systems and rolling dice, Townswick Tussle is going to give you a approachable and readable game. You will have to go over some cards and make sure you're letting people know uh, all the different terrain effects and all the different special abilities you have, but from that point on, you're really just focused on your own character and your own modifications. So you can sit down as long as one person around the table knows how to run the game and get started playing almost immediately as long as you're reading and announcing some of the core rule sets along the way. So it makes it very easy to play but hard to get to the table. And if you think you can actually dedicate the time to it, or you think you have a group that would be right for this, that would actually put in the, the day, a month of three or four hours to sit and play this, or you personally want to do some house rules like we have to make sure you can get it to the table a little bit more often than that, Townswick Tussle may still be right for you. Moving on from accessibility, let's talk about gameplay and what specifically might make this right or wrong for different players. Well, first off, this is a boss battling system that's utilizing dice rolling. That does sometimes make it a bit more random, a bit more open-ended. It, it invites chaos into the mix. And if you don't enjoy those type of games, Townsfolk Tussle isn't going to solve that problem for you. There is still randomness in the cards you draw, in the marketplace you have, in the dice you roll, and in the way that things interact with you on the board. However, on top of that, it also does a really good job at giving you a lot of fun and powerful abilities to utilize. So if you like boss battling systems, there is so much joy that's packed into this. The gameplay is not arguably inventive when it comes to the core system, right? You're moving, you're rolling, you're hitting, you're striking, you're trying to take down the creature based off of whatever AI parameters they have or whatever necessitates their destruction. But the way that you're actually upgrading your characters, the gear that you can purchase, and all of the different asymmetric abilities and asymmetric bosses you can fight make this stand out in the realm of boss battlers. This really does present a different type of challenge. Kingdom Death has the same thing, where every boss feels thematic and unique and true to itself, and Townswick Tussle is right here in the same format. If you want more epic fights to happen on your table, and you've already exhausted some of the other options you might have, this is one that you should be following. I also, personally, really like how the terrain actually gets placed out here onto the board, and I enjoy the way you interact with it. You can get a farmer to fire a shotgun out the front door, or cause this this uh, truck here to just drive straight forward, hitting whatever it's in, it is in its path. You can destroy or hop over the fence, search in the wishing well for some extra items, coins, or other magical abilities, and you can hit the bee's nest to make them swarm around whoever's right next to them. That's a lot of fun, and it feels like you're interacting with the world more than I see most other boss battlers do. They've really played with how terrain improves or changes the nature of the game state, sometimes hurting you and sometimes being your best friend. It also makes it so that the physicality of the game is really important, moving from position to position and not just ganging up on the boss in one central location tends to happen a lot. You might run over here to the well while another person runs through the corn maze and another person dives into the forest. And so you're scattering and you're all over the place and you're swarming and then coming back and trying to deal damage. It's not like you're all just rushing and following the leader and beating him with a stick every time you get close. So if you don't like boss battlers, this isn't going to change the equation. But if you do like boss battlers and you want a unique combat system, you want a lot of fun, joy-filled cards and characters to play with, and you want something that encourages you to explore the environment around you in a way that I don't see many boss battlers do, Townswick Tussle should be on your radar. Moving on from gameplay down to the modes of play, 
And here, pretty classic Kingdom Death approach, right? You're going to be playing through four boss systems. You're going to have four characters on the board. You're going to be upgrading them. So if you're playing a four-player game, every player has one character and you're just journeying through. There isn't a lot of other things to say about the modes of play. It's semi-cooperative. I suppose you can remove that element if you like. It's four bosses that you fight against, which makes the time extend, which I've already mentioned, which you could pare down like we do with a house rule to make it a little bit more balanced and approachable at one to two sessions per seat. But when push comes to shove, and at the end of the day, this is a four-player or two-player head-to-boss battler. It's what you're getting. And if you purchased it knowing that, you'll be satisfied. If you're looking for anything else, you might be a little disappointed. So, maybe that helps you figure out if this is right or wrong for you. Moving on from modes of play, let's talk about innovation. And I don't know that any one thing is fully innovative in the game, but I do have two things that I want to point out. And this is always a hard debate because the reality of innovation comes with my time in the hobby, comes with what I've played, comes with my context for what has existed before, what has existed after. And also, at the end of the day, we always have to ask the question, is it innovative? If so, how? And if not, does it even matter? Does it need to be innovative? But still, when looking at my own personal game shelf, I try to have things that stand out in unique ways. So the two areas that I would say that Townsfolk Tussle stands out, first off, has to be with the art style and just the graphic overhaul that they've done here. Since then, we've had a few different games come out with a little bit of the hose art reminiscent style, the cuphead style of uh, artwork, I think, you know, 1920s Betty Boop style. And those games have done it really well. But I don't know that anyone has quite mastered it as well as Townsfolk Tussle has done. I have yet to see a game come out in this in this covering, in this style, and and just be as arguably lovely to look at and and theme thematically accurate and and just full of character and full of humor and life. Joy is the right word for me, right? It's a happy version of Kingdom Death. It's an accessible, approachable first step into the darkness that exists around that game. And I think that does give it props. They took a risk here. They saw what was happening in the video game industry, and they decided to pull that type of art style into our board game space. And I hope more games do that, because I think it really is very, very lovely. Now, a mechanic thing that I think makes us stand out has to do with the way that every creature has an escalating fight system. If I grab Peppy the Frog here, on this first page, you see the general flavor text, the setup of the board, and also the general breakdown of what you're trying to do for the first three battles, with a little bit of changing depending on when, when and what level this ruffian is. As I flip this over, though, we start looking at just how powerful it can be. You see Chump, Hooligan, Troublemaker, and Final Fight. Final Fight is where everything is going to get more, well, more crunchy. Around here on the back, we learn about how we win, we learn about the results of the fight, and we learn exactly what the uh, Dairy Lord takeover is all about. I had that slightly backwards. This is where the basic information is. This is where the final fight information is. Either way. Uh, and I think that is fairly innovative. I like everything being so self-contained on a board. The setup guides, the, the instructions, the boss information is really, really well laid out and the boss information changes based off of the fight or the stage that you're actually engaging with them. And for me, that is something that stands out when it comes to my personal opinion, my personal takeaway from Townsfolk Tussle. And then finally, the price point. I don't actually remember the price point on Kickstarter. Maybe I should have checked that before getting into this video. It probably would have been a good idea, but I think it was somewhere around the 100, a little bit under or a little bit over mark. The Deluxe might might have been 80 or might have been 120. I, I don't even have my phone around me. I'll leave a comment pinned at the top of the game. Uh, that being said, I can't really judge the price point at the moment because the only way you can get your hands on this is through the secondhand market at, at an ex accelerated price point. Uh, I believe it was going on eBay at one point for between 350 dollars and $450. It's probably calmed down a little bit now that the hype has died off a touch, but yeah, that's a pretty steep bill to pay for any game, let alone a big boss battler that takes time to get to the table. But when they come back to Kickstarter, 
I would be paying close attention because this game, even around that $120 price point, which is the high mark, I think, of what it was back in that original campaign, uh, even around then, I think this has a lot of compelling things going on and a lot of compelling pros promise. Uh, I was a giant fan of this when we got to cover the prototype. I have been a extended fan of this throughout the duration of the last uh, six months or so that I've actually had it in hand. And I'd like to continue getting it to the table. I'm really excited to be right there with you as they bring this campaign back. I want to see them succeed. I want to see them release more content. I want to see them continue doing cool things here in our industry. Uh, and so, yeah, I'd pay attention. I don't think the price was uh, uh, unquestionably high. Uh, I do think the, the third party price is, is probably higher than you should reasonably pay for this game. But then again, you can only get it on Kickstarter. So, so what are you gonna do, right? Uh, moving on from that, final thoughts and verdict. Townsfolk Tussle. Townsfolk Tussle hits a lot of areas perfect for me. It's a little indie art project. It's got a aesthetically aesthetic style that I love. It's full of amazing flavor text and story, and it combines boss battling with a lot of fun upgrades and abilities in a way that I find really satisfying. But at the same time, I've had trouble getting Townsfolk Tussle to the table even since I've acquired this final version. Really, we only do it when we're preparing for something like a dedicated review or when we're bringing it back on the channel to highlight and showcase some gameplay. And when the next campaign comes out, I'm actually going to be thrilled because it means I'll get a chance to sit down and play this game more in depth for an extended period of time. But it is not one of those games that I'm readily reaching to grab off the shelf, and the reason being is that it does take quite a bit of time to actually get through a full campaign. And I don't always want to house roll it or change up the system. Sometimes I want to sit down and play that full three and a half to four hour squad. But uh, that's hard for me to find the actual time to sit down and do. So I'm a little conflicted on this one. I think it's amazing. And I think the circumstances of my current career and my current lifestyle, which basically equates to work constantly and only play board games that you're covering on a channel, makes it hard for me to fully and fairly judge this one. Because if this was one of a dozen games that I had, or if this was one of a few boss battlers that me and a dedicated game group loved, I think we'd dive in way more often than I get a chance to do, to do now. But I do think that even, even in that circumstance, we would probably still have some house rules that modified the time or made it a little bit quicker and more accessible to play. Now, outside of that, when it comes to the actual mechanics of the game, I find this to be such a riot to sit down and play. I have never laughed as hard as I have laughed in a boss battle or as I do here with Townsfolk Tussle. I have memories of characters just going in the completely wrong direction and screwing other people over and just not even focusing on the boss. I mean, I've had a game where one of our friends actually took down the boss basically on their own because no one else either could or was willing to get involved. And that's a lot of fun. The ambient side objectives, the personal quests create chaos in the game, which you don't find in other boss battlers because other boss battlers aren't semi-cooperative. You don't get those little nice upgrades and those little bonuses as you play through it if you've done the things that the game told you to do, which oftentimes does not help your allies. But at the same time, the semi-cooperative part of the game is probably one of my least favorite parts. I don't love the fact that I can't complete all the cards. I house rule that you can discard and cycle them out just off of your own good nature if you're pretty sure there's no way for you to even attempt to complete it. Some of them are things like eat a consumable in this next match and you're sitting there and you're like, I don't have a consumable and there's no opportunity for me to buy a consumable. So why do I have that card? And the game doesn't give you a good opportunity to mitigate that without doing some type of house rule. Uh, on top of that, some people can get really frustrated with that side objective or really distracted by it. It can create a really good bit of havoc, but some of these bosses can actually be extremely hard if people aren't working together to take them down. And so you'll find situations where you're sitting there screaming at a friend and saying, no, we have to kill Peppy. Listen, I'm about to die. And uh, their own higher judgment or their own personal quest overrides your insistence that you need to actually do damage and move the game forward. So it's a little bit of a conflict. It creates fantastic moments and amazing memories, and the mechanics of the game are extremely solid and extremely fun to explore. 
but at the same time, that semi-cooperative element might make it wrong for you or your game group, and it's probably my least favorite part of the game system. If I was going to remove anything from this, if I was going to like streamline or, or tighten stuff down, I would focus on these primary boss battlers. Have it be a one versus one, just a one single session, hour and a half boss battle, emphasize the character creation and the way that you actually get to up your stats by going through a journey, just like you do in Kingdom Death, I know, but I think it would be valuable. Or do a town phase or a market phase where you get to draft cards, something to let me get items uh, in a way that doesn't require me to fight through four different characters in the process. And I would remove the semi-cooperative element of the game. I think it does create chaos, but give me chaos and a little bit of a more directed thing. Give me side missions that I need to do or other things that I need to accomplish in order for us to all win or just bonus things that I can do in the terrain and in the environment that other players don't know about until I reveal them. Like, if I'm the one that goes and triggers the car, maybe I get to steer it, like have it take a right-hand turn or have it curve around the board. If I'm the one that goes and talks to the farmer, maybe I get a little token where I actually get the shotgun itself and can like rush our enemy. Give me more terrain, give me more of this uh, boss battling system to play with that directs me in weird, different, divergent ways. And let's take a step back from the uh, players being the conflict around the board. So that's my take. My final verdict on Townsfolk Tussle is as follows. I love this game. It's part of my per permanent collection and it will continue to be for a long time. I stand by the fact that I think this is a more accessible, more approachable version of a Kingdom Death style boss battler. And I think a lot of people who love that type of system are equally going to find a lot of joy in this. They're gonna love it as well. I have some problems, and a lot of those problems I do hope to see resolved as we approach the next Kickstarter, as we approach the next reprint of it, but even if it just stood as it is and gave me more, I would still come back for more, because none of those problems keep me from just enjoying the experience of playing. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I would probably give Townsfolk Tussle somewhere around a 4.5 out of 5 because it's not a perfect game, but it's darn close. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed this Right For You, Wrong For You series. Like I said, we're bringing these back more regularly here on the channel. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button down below and let us know what you'd like to see us cover in this format down the road. And whatever you do, remember to do the important thing, get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.